Hello, I'm Robert, the inventor of Bounce Metronome. I'm going to show you around it and especially some of the things you mightn't discover right away. When it first installs, you see the free taster and you see free taster is selected in that drop list. And then down here, we have Bounce Metronome Basic, which plays odd time signatures and, or, or any time signature you like, including odd. Then there's Bounce Metronome Professional, and then that plays all these other rhythms, such as swing and tilt, drum and dance, flamenco, polyrhythms, and so on. Many, many rhythms. And uh, so I, I will get to those eventually, but to start with, I'm going to talk first about the tempo dial and first about the rhythms and instruments. And before I do any of that, I want to talk in a general way about how you use the program, things you need to do when you first set it up, things to do with the Windows projects and so on. There's quite a lot there, as you will see, that is worth talking about, that you will find useful when you first start to use the program. And so, uh, and because this is YouTube, I'm going to keep this to short video segments of maybe 20 minutes or so for each one. And I'll just stop if it's uh, getting too long and continue in another video segment. So here we are in the free taster, which is what we see when we, when we first install it. And if you want, the first thing you will probably want to do is to go to this button. Now, if you uh, have already bought it or you, uh, or you want to start the test drive, you can go here and you can uh, start the test drive there. And then you will choose uh, the other rhythms down there. Or you can enter your unlock key in here if you have already bought it. And if you want to use it as the free taster, you also go here because we'll probably, probably want to get rid of this button. So you can then just unselect that to remove that button. So that button is not a nag. It's just for convenience. And if you want to use it as the free taster, you can use it for as long as you like. You can use it um, forever as the free taster. And the uh, way the test drive works, also should mention, you can start the test drive at any time. So many programs, the test drive starts when you install it. With Bounce Metronome, the test drive starts whenever you want to start it. So you could run it as the free taster for several years and then decide you want to take it for a test drive because you are interested in a pro feature. The, uh, if you need a new test drive because you wanted to try something new or it just wasn't long enough, just ask me and I will provide a new test drive. There's absolutely no obligation. that It doesn't mean you have to buy it. You can just start a new test drive as often as you like, indeed. It's just notional that it's 30 days, and if you need it for longer, just let me know. I, myself, often take a long time testing things, so I well appreciate and uh, uh, that you may need to take it for another test drive or a long test drive. So uh, now I'm going to talk one of the things that is very, uh, uh, let's see, which way will I do this? I think I'll first talk about the bounce synchronization, because this is something you might notice quite early on. So if you click the bouncing balls and you watch, now uh, that was OK. But now if we go here and we select this thing, which I'm going to tell you about. Now watch. Now you may notice it, or you may not. Some people notice these things more readily. But the uh, bouncing balls were quite a bit ahead of the sound there. And you will notice that especially if you try tapping along and try to synchronize your taps with the bounce. So if this... Uh, um, bothers you, then you can set a bounce synchronization delay, which gets the bounce back in, in synchronization with the sound. On the other hand, some people might even want more bounce synchronization delay. You can make that negative. 
if you want to be like following a conductor, but it bounces well ahead of the sound. And uh, so I, I won't explain much about that. We can talk about this more when we get to the sound. Just to explain very briefly why it happens, there's this, uh, the, this comes with Windows called the Microsoft GS Wavetable Synth. And this is it's a good synth in its way, but it's, it's an ancient one from the 1990s. And for some reason, it gets installed on most uh, Windows computers. It has a massive latency. Latency is like an echo, it's a fixed delay. So of, it can be one fifth of a second on many computers. So 200 milliseconds. Typically, if you have latency at all, it's milliseconds uh, on a modern computer. And indeed, sometimes on some computers, this GS wavetable synth also gets set with zero, zero latency. And uh, so there's no practical reason why it has to be so high. And I've no idea why that happens. But it's just on many computers, it, it just has a very high latency. And you can, there is a way, a geeky way of setting it back to zero, but it's flaky and it doesn't stay like that. And it pops back up to 200 milliseconds or in this case, 130 very easily. Anyway, I could talk about that more in, when I talk about sounds. If you, when you first install the program, you may well want to set a bound synchronization delay. You won't need that with Studio Drummer or Drum Core or any other sound. This is the only thing I know with that runs on Windows with such massive latency nowadays. Even right in its time, it was a huge amount of latency. So uh, that should be sorted out. Now, uh, uh, the, uh, the next thing is to notice how the tips change, but I think you will discover this pretty quickly. So as you hover the mouse over, say, the tempo dial, and you notice how there's three dots at the end of the tempo tip down there. Uh, if I move over it, it's going to vanish, of course. But uh, you, if you see the tip, there are three dots at the end, and that means that there's more help. And nearly all the tooltips do have more help. You go over here and you can read the extra help. And it changes as you go over different things. There's, as you see, there's quite a lot to the tempo dial. There's the backspace tempo tamp. There's the arrow keys. It's programmable in a sense, uh, uh, even in the free taster. So that's why I'm going to give a complete talk about the tempo dial on its own. So, uh, so I won't talk too much about that just now. And here, there's also the bouncing balls. There's a huge amount there as well. And I will talk about that separately, like skipping African beats and uh, set an instrument for individual beats. And now set an instrument for individual beats. And so on. I will explain that later on. So one thing that we want to do is, uh, it's good to know early on, is about projects. So when you have everything set up as you like it, then you want to save it as a project. So you might have a particular rhythm and you might have set the tempo dial. So if there's this tempo dial design here, now uh, I'll, just, I'll just show you something here. I just, I won't go into detail, but you can set the range to say two, to say you can set whatever range you like. So some huge range like that. If you want, you could change the notches as well to make it uh, look nicer. We won't bother with that just now. You can have a very slow, up to say, let's say up to say 10. And notice how it appears in the dial. Uh, you, so you can customize this, you know, as much as you like, 250, that's what I'm saying, fast. You're just making things up. So there you are, you've got your custom tempo dial. I mean, it's not the most wonderful tempo dial because I haven't spent any time on it. But uh, now you can go here and you can just save as. And you can save the settings to just this window. So this shows how you can save. And I've saved this extended tempo dial. Let's save it as it already exists. Might as well replace it. It will then appear down here. And so now if you click on Reset, this resets just the uh, settings for that window. So 
you have this custom reset any window in Bart's metronome, you can save it in this way. Now, just to explain a little bit more slowly what I did. So, this window that I was working with, which I will explain later on in detail how it works, so don't worry, you don't need to know how it works at this stage. And you click to the O icon there, and then you come to this window, Organize Windows. Your window is pre-selected in this drop list. You can now go down here and choose um, Save As, and then you can save all the settings for that window. Uh, that also appears on the other screen, but there you are. It'll save all the settings for that window, and then once you've saved it, it appears in this drop list here. So, and then you can reset. So you can do that with any window in Bart's metronome. And notice how it made no difference to the bouncing balls displayed, the numbers, or anything. So you know, we could put that to say beat numbers, and let's put it to bounce inside oval, bounce inside oval. So now we, re we do the same as before, change the tempo dial, reset it, and the only thing that gets changed is the tempo dial. So that can be pretty useful sometimes. And uh, so now uh, another thing that is that, that might happen is that you have everything set up. So let's go back to our extended tempo dial. You want everything like that, all the extended tempo dial and the bounce side over and counting beat numbers and everything. Then you would go down here and you choose save as project. And that will save all of that as a single project. So then you can come back to it later on. So then you can change all those things for some other uh, rhythm that you're working with or whatever. And then you can easily swap between them all. And you get a drop list of the recent projects here. And you can go back and forth in between them and, uh, and find out, you know, this is, this is very useful. Also, if you're exploring the program, and if at any point you get to the point where uh, you're a bit confused about what has happened. You, you have changed a lot, and you just feel like you would like to reset it. You can reset nearly everything here, and this keeps you. Uh, this keeps some of the settings. Or if you want to go almost like a reinstall, right back to the pre-taster and everything set up when you first installed, you can go here. And so, and I recommend that when you have things set up nicely in Bart's metronome, that you save it as a project. And, and then you can always go back to that instead of doing a reset everything uh, if you later on decide you want to do a reset. So it's very useful to work with projects in Bounce Metronome. There is also down here, there's the uh, open rhythm settings. Now be aware that this just opens mainly the sounds, some visual settings maybe, but this is, uh, you, you're not going to use that fret too much, probably. This is the much better one to use in most situations. Now, another thing, uh, if you go up here, do you see, if you go, you can go, you have these different ways of showing it. So we've got the all-in-one here at the moment, where you have the tempo dial, the bounce, and the rhythms all in one window. And then you have plenty of space for the help up there to the right. However, you might later on decide you want to change to other ways of showing it. You have, for instance, uh, this version, which hides the tempo dial, so it gives you a bit more space for the bounce. So that's quite useful. And then the help goes down below. And uh, and you can, by the way, you can go like like that. You can resize it. And you can also maximize any window. If you click on the window and you press the escape key, that window maximizes to fill the screen. And you get this thing that pops up and says, do you want to do that? And you say yes. And notice how you've got shift plus escape here to show the menu. If I want to see the menu, I use uh, shift plus escape and the menu appears. And then you press escape to go back to normal. So you have all these ways of showing bounce metronome up here. We also have the all of them separate like that. 
And again, you can click on any window, escape, go to full screen, and it doesn't matter, all of them, all the windows in Bath Special, we can do this way. Uh, so that's my customized tempo dial, that's why it's all overlapping. Let's, let's just reset the tempo dial, so we go to tempo, uh, tempo dial, because I wasn't the carefully thought that thing. So, uh, then you go click on the O icon, you click reset the window, and that resets it back to your normal tempo dial. There we are, there's this full screen normal tempo dial. Now, uh, something that you, as you will notice here, that it, it says here, dotted crotchets and quavers. Now, if you are in UK, then you know exactly what those are. But if you are in the US, you might well not be very familiar with those. And then the other way around, if you are in the UK and it, it says uh, quarter notes, you probably won't know what quarter notes are, you might not. So here you can swap between the two. And in the rest of this talk, I will talk about quarter notes because that's what uh, uh, US, uh, people in the US are most familiar with. Many of my users are from the US. So uh, that's quarter notes. And also quite a lot of countries internationally uh, find the US notation easier. Although uh, also quite a few countries find the UK notation easier. And then there's the countries that have the notations between the two, like for instance in France. And that's, for those, I have made it default to the US notation. Now, it's not going to get this right for everyone. I've got a big table of countries. The thing is that Windows, in Windows, you can tell Windows how you want the dates to be shown, for instance. And then, so then a program like Advanced Metronome, if it needs to know how you show the dates, it can interrogate the operating system and it will tell the software, this is how dates should be displayed. And in fact, it's pretty much automated, uh, that aspect of it, you don't even need to ask the operating system in many cases. But when it comes to things like quarter notes, well, there just isn't any way you can tell Windows, there's no uh, checkbox anywhere or drop list to tell Windows how you want it to display quarter notes and eighth notes. So for instance, if you're in UK or the US or Australia, you know, that you, you can't go down here, there's no way in, in Bath Metronome, there's no way in Windows you can do it. So I have this big list of countries, and it, I looked up how this is used in as many countries as I could find out, but the, the, it isn't exhaustive. I couldn't find a good page that just says where they all are, you know, what the system is for every single country in the world. So it's very possible it'll get it wrong for your country. If it does, do let me know, and this is how you change it. So uh, now, another thing I'm going to show you, notice these more buttons here. So if you click on, when you first install it, it's in newbie mode. Now all the windows are going to get remade. When I do this, it hides all these more buttons. So there's, you just, all the buttons are basically uh, only come in one form. You have just your basic simple window. But now, if you go to Ops and you switch to Advanced mode, these buttons appear. These more buttons appear. And these show larger and larger versions of the window with more and more options in them. So I need to explain a little bit about why, why I've used this system, because it's a bit unusual, and just to explain why I've done it. So if you go to now remember we at the organized window, we had this drop list of windows up here. And as you notice, there are quite a lot of windows in, even in the free taster, and even with most of the windows in the free taster hidden. There's quite a lot of windows. And uh, by the way, another way you can navigate to them is you right click on the O icon, and you have a category listing of all the windows in, in Bart's metronome. So, uh, so the, the thing is that I get many users asking me for new uh, features and requests for Bounce Metronome. And I very much welcome this. Also in TuneSmithy, 
as well, which this program builds on, then I got many requests over the years for different features. And there simply isn't enough room to put them all in the basic window. Uh, if I did that, the program would become absolutely, you maybe have 500 windows or something. As it is, it's got 252, of which luckily there's only a selection, depending on how you use the program, and some of those only belong to Tuesday. So, uh, so anyway, so that's one of the reasons why you have these more buttons. So if you request a feature, and it's very important for you, you know, as uh, I'm sure it will be, then, or, uh, and even if it's just of minor interest, you know, you just, you would quite like it. I'm still interested to hear about these features. And, uh, but uh, if I think it's either of not very, not of overwhelming interest, or that, you know, it's just a minor feature, like some su subtle change in the visual appearance or something, or if I think it's something that is very important to, but only to maybe one person in a thousand, but of course very important to that person, to those minority group of people, then I will put it in a more, the more version of one of the windows, most likely. And so, and so this is, uh, over the years I've de developed this, and it's the only thing I've found that's made it possible to keep, keep, to keep on top of all this so that you can, I can deal with these requests without making the program absolutely too complicated for the people who don't need these extra features. And, and then, so if you go to more, you'll find that some of these may be things I've been asked for. And then if you keep on going, then some of these things are things that I just put in myself. And, uh, and so, for instance, this whole area to explain how I design Bounce Metronome, then when I'm in this, I generally will decide, oh, I'm not sure what width to do. So I'll, I'll, it's very easy, very quick to put them into the window nowadays. It only takes a few minutes to put the point of width and the checkbox into the window. So I just put it in as a number, and then I adjust it until I get it looking nice. So notice how the point of width is, is the varying, varying there. Oh, I just explained what I did just there. This is another useful feature. So, and I, I'm going to stop soon, because it's already over 20 minutes. But, uh, so, okay, this, so this little area here, this is just, this is the, this whole area of advanced metronome, basically, of this window is basically to do with, apart from the custom tempo names, is to do with, uh, especially this area at the bottom, is just to do with the design. And I left it in there just because I had it there already in order to design it uh, myself. And then I thought, well, there are people who are really geeky and really into uh, designing things, and they will like appreciate this. So why not leave it in? As long as it is in the very most version of the window where the uh, least viewed uh, options go. So sometimes when you keep on clicking more and more, more, eventually you'll hit a little region like this where you wonder why it's there. Well, that's the reason it's for design geeks and the like. So uh, like I thought, why not leave it in? Because it's actually almost more work to delete it once I've got it there. So and now I just want to explain about the adjusting the numbers. So you may be aware that uh, you may have noticed that in um, in uh, music software programs such as synthesizers, they have these little dials that go round. But because your mouse can't go round and round so easily, then you drag up and down in order to adjust the numbers. Well, uh, and the dial spins around. And often you have a separate text field below it, which you adjust. Um, you, can, you can type the number in. Uh, so I've used exactly that system, but I've got rid of the dial. So you, uh, there's no dial, there's sort of like, almost like a, an implicit dial, but it isn't, isn't any this dial to turn around. There's just a number. You click on the number, and then you drag out of the box and see how the number changes, and notice how the, the point has changed width. Click on it and go down, and it also changes. If you hold the shift key and the various other keys that you can hold, you, it changes much more quickly. So, so that lets you type in the number 
that also lets you uh, just with click and drag like that. Uh, right, so now I say I've reached 25 minutes. I, I'll, I'll stop now. So there's loads more I could talk about. And I might possibly do another general video after this one. So uh, this is the Robert Infect channel on, on YouTube. And uh, so I'm Robert. And you can uh, get Bart's Metronome from bartsmetronome.com. Uh, do please comment on this video. I'm really interested in any comments. And uh, you can, you might be interested in the Facebook group at, at facebook.com forward slash France Metronome as well. And I'll put some links on this video. Uh, so uh, I, I better stop now and more, more on this uh, later. Uh, thanks for listening.